I didn't know if all the songs from the original were gonna be in this. But then they told me that they, they were, and I was like, I can't sing. But I try really hard, and I have a lot of hours to dedicate to this, so I'll just do what, I'll just do my best. This is already the most embarrassing experience. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to count how many times I've tried to record that one line, it ain't no passing craze, because I bet it's in the thousands. Ain't no passing craze. It ain't no passing, no passing <laughs> craze. We should get to Donald's word at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I just like listening. And, um... It was just really fun. Pretty much just us cracking jokes on each other and looking at each other. We're all like in a triangle, you know, sitting there. So like we're all in the room just looking at there's cameras and stuff like that. So like any mess ups were just met with laughter. I thought that was pretty good. I clicked into place. It was one of those things that clicked in. <laughs> Uh, we have an imminent threat. Something is approaching. Oh, wait, scratch that. That's my own shadow. John Oliver. I don't... He was born to play Zazu. Scar? Scar? Scar, 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 no. Well, I liked Zazu when I was a kid. I've always liked a wisecracking bird. And uh, now I am that wisecracking bird. I had a cousin who thought he was a woodpecker. He slammed his head into trees, and our beaks aren't built for it. He was concussed. Regularly, so, uh, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I got lost, lost in the narrative, sire, catching up quickly. Perfect. I think, I think we could uh, move on. You're pretty much nailing it. By the way, uh, gotten compliments on your singing as well from uh, Hans Zimmer. It's not my first time doing animation, but it's the first time perhaps doing it in this particular way. As the king's brother, you should have been first in line. When we thought, how are we going to approach The Lion King, we knew we needed to do something new, completely new. And we had the idea to do this in virtual reality, take the tools of virtual reality and apply those to filmmaking in a way that's never been done before. We built a video game, the purpose of which is to make a movie. Inside that video game, instead of cars and guns and points being scored, we've got cameras and lights and lions. So we go inside the volume, which is this technology blank space, this space that's filled with grids that hold virtual reality sensors, things that tell the computers where virtual cameras are in space or virtual steady cams, or virtual dollies or virtual cranes. These all look like and feel like real filmmaking equipment, except there's no camera attached. There's just a sensor that says, Hi, I'm a camera, I'm over here, I've got a 50 millimeter lens on, I'm looking downward at 20 degrees, and there's a line. And it's just as if you're playing a video game, except instead of controllers, and we do use controllers at times, we're using tripods, we're using wheels, we're using steady cams. So we're giving the filmmakers all the analog tools that they're accustomed to. Their instincts are reliable, but the output is all through this real-time game engine. Yeah, let's just back up the animation. You need to be a hair lower, though. All right. There you go. Let's do it right there. 